Hi everybody, this is my 40 gallon waterfall tank and today we're just going to do some basic maintenance on it rather than just topping it off I'm going to go ahead and do a water change we are going to vac a lot of the mome and crud and stuff out of the tank we're going to get the glass wiped down and the filter on the right here is not so much for cleanliness but it's just for a little added circulation because I get very little circulation in this tank. So I will be changing out the filter pad on that. Um, it will be probably pretty dirty at this point, but that is just a extra little sort of boost for circulation. The pump that pumps the water up to the top so it can water fall back down. Used to have a filter in front of it, but I switched it over. I put a bigger pump and I never got around to putting any kind of filter housing or anything on it. And so it's literally just the open face of an aquarium pump or a, a fountain pump. And so it's probably got a bunch of crud stuck to the front grate of that. In fact, I can see from here, it's got a floating batch of Java Windelov stuck to the front of it. So I'll be getting in there and cleaning that off. But I wanted to discuss the idea that I've touched on before about what constitutes a dirty tank. So we are going to do the before and after, but we are going to also look at the process of getting this tank cleaned out. You can probably tell there's a bunch of mom and crud and stuff down at the bottom of the tank. I'm trying to do this without scaring the fish too much. Don't often get too good of a look at my grommy there just kind of hanging out it's usually darting and dashing around the tank so if we look into the corners you can see it looks like snow drifts piled up that's all just mom collected in the corners and of course if you get back into those little nooks and crannies back there you've just got loads and loads of the stuff you can see it just settles down like dandruff all over everything it's all in the plants there so I will, I guess I will try to wipe the glass down first so we can get the best look as possible. The only problem with doing that is when I wipe the glass down, it swirls the water up and it really disturbs the mom. And when I get in there and vac it out, I try to get in there as gently as I can uh, so as to, you know, suck it out while it's piled up on the bottom rather than swirling around in the water column. So we'll see. It's not that dirty, so you can still probably see what's going on. You don't need to see fine detail when I'm vacuuming the mulm out of there. As long as you can see what's going on, you'll get a pretty good idea. So we'll probably go ahead and just follow my normal routine. Uh, one last note I want to make before we get started is the water sprite that I put in here recently is doing well, and it is sending new shoots up and it is recovering just fine that is the water sprite that just recently got uh, very cold overnight it was sitting in the frozen water I'm not going to get into a discussion about that again but that is that water sprite and lastly before we get started just so we can discuss the idea of what a dirty tank is you just got to see what all of that looks like and all that mom and all that crud and everything that's built up on the bottom well that's what my nitrates in this tank look like which are I'm going to say under five. It's virtually none. Very, very little color change at all to the water when I did my test. So just because you see a lot of mom doesn't mean you've got high nitrate. And just because you've got a nice, bright, clean, shiny tank doesn't mean you have low nitrate. I've got other tanks that look a lot cleaner than this, but have a dark, dark red vial. So cleanliness in an aquarium is not necessarily what you think just by looking at it so anyway let's go ahead and get started we will say there's your before
we will say there's your before and there's your after so it looks a whole lot better but mostly because I've got the glass wiped down and I've got a lot of the tannins removed from the tank and that allows you to see through there a lot more clearly gives the water a lot more of that sparkly quality lights the fish up a lot better and just kind of makes the tank look brighter and I guess cleaner in a way if you know you know tannin isn't anything that makes the tank dirty but it just makes the water look stained and that can certainly give the appearance of a dingy tank that nice bright light in there certainly makes it look a lot better so I just realized as I was starting to film this after section, I never did actually do anything with that filter over there that just got left alone, which is no big deal. Uh, water's flowing through it. That's all I needed to do. I'm not really worried about whether it's filtering anything physically. Uh, we just saw how much mulm I removed from there. That was certainly not all of it, but whenever I get in there and can get a lot of it out like that, I like to. And you can see in the back, there's actually spots where you can see gravel again. You can see some rocks here and there. I got a lot of the mulm out of the plants. The snow drift in the corner is looking cleaned out. And a lot of the stuff up front is cleaned out too. So that was the main goal was just to get in there and make the tank look a little tidier. As you saw, the nitrate level in the tank was not very high. I've got a fair amount of growth going on in this tank, mainly my daylily there and the bird's nest fern you can see on the right. And then the stuff we've got going on in the tank is not really fast growing plants, but they are green growing plants. So they draw nutrients out of the water. And then of course I've got all that algae, all that cyanobacteria. I've got stuff growing up here. I've got duckweed. So there is a lot of vegetation going on in this tank that pulls uh, the nutrients and stuff out of there. And it's not a heavily stocked tank. So despite all that mulm and all that stuff that made it look cruddy, there was no real reason to get in there and do the water change other than making the tank look a little tidier. And again, it's mainly just what grows on the glass on the inside. This is a very brightly lit tank, so I do get some growth on the glass. But mainly, I get splashing on the glass that comes from this tank. And as the water dries up, it leaves behind uh, the minerals. And I wind up with that sort of white, cakey, powdery looking stuff all over the front glass of this tank. And that's what really makes this tank look dirty, is the outside of the glass from another tank. But that's about it. The only other thing I can think of that I did while I was in there that's worth mentioning was I went through my... Uh, day lily here and I pulled a bunch of the yellow dead stuff that was out and just kind of hanging down and draping down into the water I pulled a lot of that out and got that out of there Just to give you an idea Of the depth of all this my day lily actually sticks out further than the tank does From above the waterfall and if you weren't aware of it that the tank comes all the way back to here That waterfall actually falls about halfway in the middle of that tank It does not fall at the back of the tank at all So fish have plenty of room to swim around here behind the waterfall So there you go That was my little Sunday evening project before dinner We'll see if we get down here after dinner And tinker around with anything else In the meantime I'm going to leave you with a look at my tilapia who's making an appearance over there in the corner not the best zoom in but there you go there's my spotted tilapia in my new world tank so thanks for watching this one don't forget to subscribe i'll see you real soon in the next one